Welcome back. So it's been an interesting two weeks since our last update. I've now completed phase one of my training, which are the briefings, and now I've moved on to phase two, which are sim sessions to practice what has been taught. In today's video, I'll be focusing on my first two sim sessions this past weekend, which included hone into a VOR and NDB station. Entries into a hold over VOR or NDB station, as well as the hold itself. The second session was the same, but in this instance, a hold with wind. Okay, so in these two hours, we're going to be using two stations, a VOR station as well as an NDB station. The NDB station is Whiskey Bravo at uh, Foxwood Alpha Whiskey Bravo, which is Von der Boom Airport. And then we'll be using the VOR station Delta Papa Victor, which is as well at Von der Boom Airport. For illustration purposes, I'm going to be using the VOR approach plates as well as the NDB approach plates to runway 29 at Von der Boom Airport. Both of these plates detail the frequencies uh, required to tune in to the station as well as the Morse code identifiers. Such plates are available on the SACAA website um, for free. The SACAA plates as well as the Jefferson plates are both valid for use, but just remember for the Jefferson plates, you have to pay for them. So let's look at the first example. The simulator we are using is a FNPT2 and the cockpit models that of a Piper Seneca. However, for the purposes of these sessions, the instrument panel is set for the Piper Cherokee. We will now look at the first two examples whereby I practice entering a hold overhead, Delta Papa Victor, as well as a hold overhead, Whiskey Bravo. 104. Yes. Good. So now I'd like you to use your right thumb method okay. on your DI to try and establish what hold entry you're going to do. Okay. Take your right thumb, place it on your DI. Okay, so now, which sectors do we have? So we have um, direct below us. Direct is at the bottom. And then we have teardrop on in the top right. right. And then we have parallel on the top. Good, so where right. do you see heading 104 on your DR? What sector or what hold entry do you think you're going to do? Okay, 104 is going to be in the parallel sector so we're going to do a parallel entry parallel entry very good at the moment you can just route directly for the beacon and prepare yourself mentally for the hold entry okay okay kilo fox to bravo overhead delta papa vector entering the hold kilo fox to bravo report outbound ready for the approach okay report outbound ready for the approach fox to bravo fox to bravo okay wait for one minute okay at one minute we're going to do Left turn, standard big turn. Okay, we take two eight four. Okay, two eight four, two five eight, so we can set the time. Turn fifteen degrees angular bank to the right hand side, twist, walk out the floor. Turn 50 
goes out to the bank. Twist. Okay, we go to a four. Watch that angle of bank. Okay, we can take that heading. Pluck up the set. So with Sim Session 1, it went well. You can see from my NDB whole tracks were quite accurate. The challenge lay more so with VOR as I was having trouble timing rolling wings level on my inbound leg. Conclusion, session demonstrated I conceptually understood the motor skills required to perform a hold, but with this next session, I knew it was going to be a tough one because I could already tell I was having trouble visualizing in my head what the hold will look like with wind. And even though I recently learned the formula for the wind correction angle, when you know the upper winds, what I didn't know is how to determine it in flight. And so I went into the session knowing I was going to have trouble and figured I'll resolve it along the way. You will find with this one I was struggling a bit and was having points of saturation. I was also feeling a little groggy that day, so it wasn't a good combination. Anyways, let's have a look. Okay, you aren't talking to yourself enough on the inbound. Okay. Every single time we've done a wind correction on the inbound, mm -hmm. you pick the heading and the needle keeps going to the left hand side when you get over at the station. So what does that tell you? Okay, so it means the wind is coming from the right. So... Uh, no, it means that you've been correcting too far to the right. Okay. Because with your wind correction on the inbound, as you fly it, what you should see is can you see over here you've got a track mm -hmm. 290 mm -hmm. am i right That's correct what heading does the aircraft have at the moment uh it has 289 okay i can see where it's gone a bit pear shape in the fact that you touch to this a little bit you're heading at the moment according to the simulators on 293 okay. and that represents on your compass as well okay because you adjusted a little bit you touch the left needle or the nest the left select instead of the heading bug selector mm -hmm. that's caused it to go a bit pear shaped mm -hmm. right we're going to unpause you now and you're going to turn so i want you to apply a now a two degree correction on the inbound okay so two degree correction on the inbound is uh, two just forgotten the, the wind correction so it's going to be uh, to the right yes so it's going to be 286 286 so when I unpause you're going to go out to 286 then if it's a two degree correction on the inbound what is it on the outbound it's going to be a six degree correction um, to the left so it's going to be nine zero nine eight there we go. Correct. Uh, 09, uh, 098 and 286. Good. 3, 2, 1. Okay, so after these two sessions, there are two key takeaways that I need to learn and hone. I'm going to read them out because they're quite long and I want to make sure I get them accurately. So the first one is, number one, I need to go through the process of ingraining into muscle memory the motor skills required to intercept or fly direct to a fix or a station. Flying a hold with wind, including maintaining assigned altitude for the hold. Because my last attempt, altitude variance was plus or minus 500 feet. So, um, And this was due to my need to focus on maintaining headings to achieve an accurate hold. I also need to smooth out the mnemonic briefings such as Frieda's and spit gaff, callouts and radio calls. The second one is determining the wind correction angle based on the inbound leg and the degree in which the CDI needle drifts to one side once established on the inbound leg. 
If the needle just to the right, then the wind is from the right and you have to correct from the right. And one has to ingrain in oneself that it's not something that will be achieved in the first hold, that is to say, to determine the wind correction angle. Attempts may take three times to get correct. That's actually very important. Of course, if you have a glass cockpit that automatically determines your headings based upon the wind direction, that makes life a lot easier. But for training your test as well as redundancy purposes and for some aircraft as well, um, you've got to do it the old-fashioned way, stick and rudder. The other thing I realized that became saturated when doing the mental math on the inbound leg, so that's just something I need to practice. Okay, that's it guys. Thank you very much for watching uh, this week's episode. Remember, if you like this video, give it a like. And if you want to join me on this journey, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much and I'll see you guys on the next one.